Hey, Impact fans, what's up? Welcome back to the lounge. Here's something I want to ask you guys, and I'm really curious in the comments because uh, I think I've talked about this a little bit on Twitter with a few people, but not a whole lot, to be honest with you. Um, what did you think of Eli Drake's title reign as the global champion? So here's my take on this. Something I was very concerned about, and I think ultimately proved to be the case, is that Eli Drake's global title run became synonymous with the uh, the ugly championship. Now, I think the GFW champions championships are very sharp as originally created. And I even think the other titles look okay with the placard. But I think we're all in agreement that the current world title looks like crap. So I feel like that title he has become synonymous with. Um, he's become synonymous with the green ropes a little bit. You know what I mean? Which again look very sharp on Global Force Wrestling, if you watch, if you've seen Amped, but they don't look right in the Impact Ring. Um, synonymous with some of the worst play-by-play uh, -play and color commentary in the history of Impact and TNA, in my opinion. And again, I'm a Josh guy. I've always been a Josh guy, but this current announced team um, truly did some of the worst work in my opinion in in the past you know several months that we've heard on impact television i really i really feel that way some of you may think otherwise so one of the things i've also said too is that he never had a yin for his yang like he was this you know guy where oh now the focus is going to be on him and his mic skills and everything but he didn't have anyone to go back and forth with and this is where perhaps there was a missed opportunity at Bound for Glory to do a program with James Storm or a program with EC3. You know what I mean? And that's something I think a majority of you probably agree with me on. Those are missed opportunities of guys who could cut promos, guys who could talk. But instead, what did the company do? They went back to the well. Oh, a uh, former WWE guy. We're going to get him in the main event. And, you know, they pushed Johnny Impact into the main event which I like Johnny Impact, but, you know, obviously his promo skills are not on the level of Eli Drake. They tried to create heat between, you know, him and Eli Drake that really wasn't there. And even when Johnny Impact got his number one contendership, they tried to create some kind of rivalry and heat between him and Garza Jr. for that number one contendership. And, you know what I mean? So he never really had someone across the ring from him when he had that title that actually made you care about the feud. So, you know, they always say it's not the champion, it's the, I mean, it's not the belt, it's the champion. I think it's both a little bit, you know, y you, it, but it's also the challenger. It's also the people you're put in a program with. And it, the, 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 the Bound for Glory program wasn't compelling at all. It, it wasn't good. You know, the match was actually pretty decent, but then they, you know, did the El Patron thing. And then after that, and we've talked about this on the uh, Impact Review podcast, is that the world title scene, the global title scene, and he's going to be synonymous with that name as well, the global champion. But it seemed like Johnny Impact and El Patron were the main focuses of the storyline, and Eli Drake was in the background. He wasn't like the main figure. like He was the third wheel in all of it. And it just didn't... I, I, it just, I don't know, the rain as a whole, I don't think was what we had hoped and expected. I don't think he's going back to job or status or anything like that. But, you know, I think he's going to, you know, maintain his position in the in the main event scene. But the title wasn't, you know, the, the rain wasn't what we expected. Fast forward to now. Austin Aries wins the title. Okay, I appreciate more than anybody some good marketing. But this Aries for Champ hashtag, if you were if you were to go on Twitter and click Aries for Champ, I'm pretty sure the Impact Wrestling Twitter is the only <laughs> account talking about it. And and let me let let me tell you where I'm going with this. I appreciate you know the the, the marketing, like I said, and the you know diff different digital platforms using Aries for Champ or Aries is Champ hashtag. I think I keep saying Aries for Champ. Aries is Champ hashtag. And say, oh, what was your favorite Austin Aries match? And, you know, uh, promoting the GWN with Austin Aries moments. 
even the GWN app now has Austin Aries in the forefront. I think it took out maybe AJ Styles or something like that or EC3. So it, my thing is it almost looks, I don't know if desperate is the right word. It's probably not, but it, but it's something synonymous with, with it a little bit. It's it, it's saying, hey, everybody, look, someone came back to the company um, and we put a title on him. He's one of our guys and he's got the championship now. And they're just making it so much about him. They're not using social media to build up a feud between Eli Drake and Austin Aries. They're making it making it all about Austin Aries. Like they're letting us know this is the guy we want to hold the title. They haven't shown us, and maybe they have and I haven't seen it, but I don't see any Eli Drake reactions. I don't see them, you know, what are the what's Eli Drake gonna say next week? Instead, they're oh, number one contendership will be decided by again Johnny Impact and, and a few other guys who I'm not sure what they did to deserve that. And it doesn't mean Eli Drake won't get a rematch. I mean, when you're the number one contender, it doesn't necessarily mean you're the first person. I know hypothetically it does, but usually in wrestling, it doesn't necessarily mean you're the first person to challenge. Um, so I'm curious what you guys think about this, you know, Aries' this champ thing too. I think it's too much. I think it's way too much. I think it's over the top. Every time I log on, when it impacts... Uh, on social media and look at Impact's account, it's it's just Austin Aries, Austin Aries, Austin Aries, and it's awesome. We're happy. We're we're happy he's back. We want to enjoy the ride, and we want to enjoy his championship title reign, but not at the ex you know at the expense of Eli Drake just getting pushed to the side. Because again, there's nothing building a feud between the two. I'm sure they're going to do something on TV. Eli Drake's going to be pissed, but I feel like. This is going to be one of those things where Eli Drake gets, gets his rematch like a week later and loses, and then they just push him out of the title scene. So I don't know if that's what's going to happen. I have a really good feeling it is, though. So it's really unfair to him as much as we're excited to have him back. Um, and I'm referring to Austin Aries. It's kind of a slap in the face at the same time because we are all really excited for Eli Drake as champion. It's not like, uh, you know, Tyrus was that you know has been the champion for the last half year and we just couldn't wait for to get the title off this guy and then Austin Aries comes and does it you know what I mean he took the title off someone we really like and now they're kind of like shoving it down our throats like hey uh, our guy our guy came back and he won the title anything could happen well what about Eli Drake please hit subscribe if it's your, if it's your first time here on the channel let me know your thoughts on the comment in the comments about about everything, about Eli Drake, about Austin Aries, and um, anything else that you want to say, give a thumbs up as well. Hell, give a thumbs down if you want to, because some some of the trolls who come in and give thumbs down, well, thumbs downs actually help my videos just as much as the thumbs up do. <laughs> Thanks for swinging by, folks. Talk to you soon. Peace.